सर्वियर <laughs> Dear audience, you all know today, 21st February, is a very special day in the history of Bangladesh. Uh, it's International Mother Language Day, Antarctic Mother Language Day. Uh, in 1952, this day, people of Bangladesh protested against forceful application of Urdu as national language, or people sacrificed lives for mother language Bangla. So let us respect the martyrs with respect and keep them in our prayer for their contribution. Now let us back to the session. Today, our keynote speaker is Dr. Tapish Shahu. He is now working as consultant in Division of Peripheral Vascular and Endovascular Sciences, Medanta Medicity Hospital, Gurugram, India. Today, our topic of discussion is duplex study of neck and abdominal arteries. Today, we are honored by the presence of Dr. M. Abidu Rahman, sir, from uh, USA, and Professor Norish Chandra Mondal, head of the department, Vascular Surgery Department, NICBD, and Dr. J. M. Mogulshan, Ibnatina. Hospital. Now, I would like to request Dr. J. Mukulshan sir to give inauguration speech and to start the program. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, we are really honored in presence of Dr. M. Abidur Rahman sir, uh, Dr. Tapish Abidur Rahman sir. Uh, he is working in the USA and uh, usually uh, uh, sir visited uh, Dhaka so many times and he trained the Bangladeshi surgeons. Uh, Uh, with his effort, uh, we can say the vascular surgeons in, uh, um, in here are in such a position. We are grateful to him. He is with us today. Uh, with these few words, uh, before going to the session, uh, today's uh, uh, topic is uh, the duplex study of uh, neck artery as well as the uh, abdominal artery, particularly renal artery. Uh, before uh, uh, speech of Dr. Tapish Shah. Uh, the sabiar uh, who is the sponsor of this uh, uh, subsequent sessions this is fourth session uh, they will uh, uh, like to say something uh, uh, about this program uh, uh, sabiar habibur rahman from sabiar please uh, tell something uh, uh, about uh, uh, this program thank you sir sir uh, first of all i'd like to thanks to all of you uh, thank you all for being here this lovely evening i am md habib rahman regional manager sabia bangladesh operations uh, actually it's a great honor for me to uh, having the opportunity to say few words in this occasion so actually i would like to just thanks uh, to the organizer and the uh, participant and uh, the speaker so first of all i'd like to thanks uh, to the speaker dr tapish shah from india actually the event has been started since january and including uh, today's event there will be four events so during this whole time he has done really extraordinary works and i i, I actually had the opportunity to join in some of the program and i have seen how much he is a research person and i believe bangladesh vascular surgery has got a lot uh, from this research person then uh, i would like to thanks to the international faculty uh, dr m abidur rahman vascular and endovascular surgeon usa he is here with us so thank you sir for joining and uh, finally i would like to thanks uh, to the national faculty uh, dr j m mongbul hussain sir and uh, professor dr norish chandra mondol sir actually uh, without their permission without their guidance and without their cooperation it is not possible for us to uh, being uh, we, uh, with the uh, program as a scientific uh, partner so so thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to being scientific partner uh, on the program vascular life uh, uh, ibn sina vascular life webinar on vascular science so thank you so much sir and of course the audience Uh, who actually uh, involved with this program uh, from uh, very beginning to till the end and with their active participations and i hope they have learned a lot so thank you all for their thank very uh, entertaining uh, participations and finally uh, i just uh, would like to thanks to all of you for being your trust 
on the original research brand's uh, brand uh, depth one. So thank you, sir. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Habib Rahman, regional manager from Serbia, for your uh, words. Now I would like to request uh, Dr. Tapi Shahu, sir, vascular uh, and vascular surgeon from Medanta Medicity Hospital, uh, to present uh, his topic, and that is duplex study of neck and abdominal arteries. Uh, dear audience, you also know that our uh, there is a question and answer session after the presentation. And this session is also live in Facebook page. So you can put your questions uh, in chat boxes or in Facebook comments, uh, comment section. Now let us uh, listen from Dr. Tafi Shauser about the today's topic. Uh, uh, Dr. Tafi Shauser, please. Sir. Sir, uh, Dr. Mogbul, sir, uh, respected Rahman, sir, from US and all respected colleagues from Bangladesh, I welcome you again, you welcome me again. So, but I think in this series of uh, talking to each other, uh, this is not the fourth one, this is the fifth one that we are doing. The fourth are of the series and first one was where it all started. So Dr. Mokbul Hussain has been a witness to everything and has been the pioneer and the, the key person to, uh, to uh, coordinate everything. So thank you, thank you everybody in Bangladesh and hope to meet you all soon. And as you were discussing regarding the AstraZeneca vaccine and uh, the, the uh, protocols being set, uh, once everything is ironed out, then I think that uh, we'll, be, we'll be free to uh, uh, meet each other in person and these things will also continue, but then we'll be more, uh, uh, you know, feeling each other. So, and uh, this is an honor to be talking to you all on your Matra Bhasha day. And uh, really, I mean, uh, the day... And the date is such that it just it just falls in place. And uh, uh, we'll start with the last uh, lecture in the series. And I hope that everybody has taken some key points in all the presentations regarding the arteries, veins, the AV fistula, everything. If at all, even 50% I was able to convey uh, whatever I wanted to, I think we have been successful in our endeavor and this should continue further on. So today we'll be talking in this series. Actually, the topic is quite vast, but then I discussed with Dr. Mokbul sir and he said that of uh, interest to the uh, to the people, it's more uh, uh, just... Uh, sir, we cannot hear you. No, no, he's uh, he talking with others. Sorry. So, uh, what I was saying is that uh, the topic of, uh, actually, it would have needed uh, uh, two or three more classes to cover up the complete neck and abdomen. But since uh, we have to uh, uh, be concise and wrap it up, so we'll be talking morely, mostly about the carotids, renals, a little bit about SMA and uh, aorta, because this, these are all separate uh, regions, but of value to... Uh, to, uh, to us is uh, these two things which uh, Dr. Mokbul said that we'll be talking about. So just I'm sharing the screen. So just if you can see. I think the screen is visible, sir, Mokbul, sir? Yes, yes. yes. We can see it. So it is about the arterial Doppler scanning. And in this, we'll be talking first about the carotids. We won't go much into the detail about the vertebrals or any other neck vessels. We will focus more mostly on the carotid. So this is how the carotid bifurcation looks like normally. It can be a variant. It can be having many, many, uh, 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 I mean, normal but uh, skewed anatomies because of tortuosity, because of, uh, because of uh, uh, the uh, uh, carotids becoming a little uh, uh, redundant. So, but this is norm in the normal case, if you look at the normal carotid, this, this, this is the common carotid, which bifurcates into the internal and external. So this is the normal position of the artery. And uh, uh, first of all, like every uh, Doppler examination, I've always said that before going into any other mode, have a thorough D mode examination of the artery. It gives you 
very uh, uh, valuable information regarding thrombus, regarding plaques, regarding anatomy, regarding variations. So never ever skip the B mode. Have uh, devote as much time you can to the B mode examination, both in the uh, longitudinal and the transfers. Do a thorough uh, uh, mapping and landmarking of the arteries. Uh, whatever you are uh, seeing, don't worry about the time because this is what gives you key information about the surgery that you are going to do. And uh, uh, I mean, sometimes even better than angiogram, I would say the Doppler rays. So do not undervalue a Doppler anytime. So this is of the carotid bifurcation, IC and ECA seen in the same plane. So this is how you should uh, focus your probe. And this is uh, done by the same probe, the linear probe that we have always used in the previous three lectures. And uh, uh, the tips and tricks here are that begin each scan on the same side, usually the right side. And then, uh, uh, um, I mean, the basics, I won't go into that, the temperature, the, the, the jelly and all those things we have already discussed. Uh, for the carotids, avoid excess pressure on the bifurcation to avoid to stimulate the carotid sinus because it can cause bradycardia, it can cause syncope, it can cause ventricular asystole. So be very gentle with the carotid artery, especially at the bifurcation. Compress arteries to, uh, 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 if you do a compression, it can cause furiously high velocities. So these, this, this is the carotid body is very, very sensitive. So do not uh, be, be very, uh, you have to be very gentle with that in your Doppler examination. So there is, uh, as I said, a variation of the normal in this as compared to others where there is a bifurcation zone, where there is a dividing zone. This is the normal flow reversal zone in the internal carotid artery because velocities are higher near flow divider and flow reversal on the opposite side to flow divider occurs. So there will there may be a flow reversal zone opposite to the origin of the ECA. So this is normal. This is not a this is not a uh, abnormal finding. So this can be there. So uh, 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 the difference between the other femoral arteries and brachial that we talked about, there is a dichrotic notch in this. And this is also a normal feature. So these are the differences from the previous talks that I'm just highlighting here. Because the closure of aortic valve with temporary cessation of forward flow, that is why the dichrotic notch is formed. And when there is resumption of forward flow by elastic rebound of the aortic wall, so this is the dichrotic notch that is found in the carotid. So this is not the regular triphasic flows that we were seeing in all the other Dopplers. So this is the dichrotic notch. So if there is a tortuosity in the vessel, again, there may not be any occlusion or stenosis, but the tortuosity itself can increase the velocity and there is no stenosis. So tortuous common carotid displays color and Doppler as eccentric jets of flow. So this mm -hmm. is not due to any occlusion or stenosis or a plaque, but in a ectatic, in a tortuous artery, not ectatic, on a tortuous artery, you can have higher velocities. And this is due to eccentric jet in tortuous common carotid. So uh, try sampling just beyond the curve and you will not have this aliasing. So atherometers plaque, how do they appear in the, uh, in the uh, carotid and uh, what are the variations that you can see? So it may be a homogeneous ecolucent structure seen like this, this is a plaque. There may be a homogeneous ecogenic structure there can be a heterogeneous plaque, which is of varied composition, which can have certain lipid core inside. It can have a cauliflower, cauliflower calcification like this. So these are all the plaque morphologies, as we call them, in the carotid that can occur. And everything has a different clinical implication. I'm not going into the clinical implication, just talking about the Doppler and Doppler findings that you can have. And you have to note down all the findings to be correlated clinically if you are doing it for somebody else or if you're doing it even for yourself, you should document everything that you see. Now, if there is a calcified plaque, then that plaque may uh, give a shadow obscuring portion of the bulb. So if this occurs, then you, then you may not see color flows there because there is a calcified plaque. So interrogate the artery beyond the plaque. The shadowing segment, if it is less than one centimeter, it will have no turbulent flow then it is insignificant stenosis. If there is dampened or turbulent flow beyond the plaque, then there is a tight stenosis, which is hidden in this uh, uh, obscured 
block that you are not able to uh, interrogate further. So if the shadowing segment is more than two centimeter, then uh, degree of stenosis is indeterminate and other modalities like angiograms may be recommended. But if it is, if you go before or after, you can have an idea based on how the flows are that whether there is something inside significant in the plaque or not. So you may not <coughs> be able to do that reason, but uh, seeing further ahead may give you a clue about that. So then this is a large plaque ulcer. Then this is a ulcer which can give an appearance of a pseudo dissection. This is not exactly a dissection, but a, but a plaque ulcer is there, which is giving this appearance. And then on power Doppler, there can be eddy flows like this seen. So this is a pseudo dissection, this color, and this is an eddy flow, which can be seen in a large plaque ulcer uh, in the carotids. So how do you estimate the stenosis of a carotid artery? So there can, you have to see for, look for diameter reductions, look for surface reductions, So diameter reduction is this, which you see the lumen and you see the, the, the flowing lumen and the complete lumen. This is the plaque here. And then there is a surface reduction. If you make a circle here, then you see the surface reduction in the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, flow of the artery. So relationship between diameter reduction and area reduction is that the diameter reduction, if it is 30%, the cross-sectional area is reduced by 50. So this is, this is kind of a extrapolation that you just draw a line. If you see that, okay, this line is 30% uh, reduced, then the actual flow is reduced by 50%. So if it is 50% diameter, then it is corresponding to a 75% cross-sectional area reduction. And if it is a 70% diameter reduction, the cross-sectional area is reduced by 90%. So it's not, I mean, uh, this table is uh, very helpful in extrapolating, otherwise, you can have both the estimations on a Doppler by your uh, 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 software. And if you have the uh, uh, proper uh, circle made on the circumference, you can know uh, in both the circumference how much is the uh, area reduction also. So cardinal Doppler parameters to rate stenosis, we have talked about this, the ratios, the PSVs, the ADVs. We discussed this in the uh, femorals also that... Uh, the ratios and what do they signify, but still just uh, uh, we'll touch up a little bit on this. We we'll won't go into the detail as we did in the triphasic and biphasic waveforms last time. So the PSVs are best documented Doppler parameter for carotid stenosis and EDVs are quite valuable for detecting high-grade carotid stenosis. So the ratios that we see are because as, we, as, as somebody uh, uh, asked last time that there are many, many factors in the body because of which the uh, the uh, the values can be uh, a little uh, you know uh, erroneous so psvs are basically ratio so ratio will be from the baseline or from the normal area to the stenosed area so you will not have those uh, errors of collateralization or errors of physiological factors, as somebody rightly pointed out, if the cardiac output is low of that patient, or if the pulse rate is high, or if the BP is different, then the ratio will not change. The uh, velocities may change, but the ratios will be uh, constant between the normal and the abnormal segment. So if we see the flow velocity and the lumen size, now go from right to left, if we see that, as the decrease in diameter is happening or decrease in cross-sectional area is happening, the velocities go on increasing till a certain uh, uh, time. Just, just. So there is an increase in the velocity after which, after a cutoff point, then there is a decrease, there is a sudden fall uh, in the velocity. So this means that uh, uh, there was a question that the PSVs will, will go on rising, rising, rising till a point, and then when the occlusion is more than 96, 97%, then you will have almost no flow seen, and then uh, what are the string signs and all, we'll just come to that. So what are the ICS stenosis? Uh, just a mention, because this is, this is quite an old uh, thing that we are still following at some centers, because uh, the countries have their own uh, reporting parameters. 
so naset and ecst this is just the basic of that that in the naset which was uh, 91 to 98 uh, it it took into account the normal uh, region of the carotids for uh, this formula of b minus a upon b while ecst took the stenosed area into account wherein it was c minus a upon c so the difference between them was that if a naset was 30% ecst was 65% 40% corresponding to 70% so as we go higher the the ecst is always a overestimation uh, uh, of the because it is it is related to the uh, uh, i mean it will always be higher than the naset because it is related to the stenosis segment rather than naset which is taking the normal uh, segment into account so degree of ic stenosis in doppler ultrasound the consensus criteria or the, uh, the naset criteria is that the normal will have a psv is of less than 125 and edv is of less than 40 so we took the magic figure of 2 as you would remember in the femurals also that the magic figure was 2 less than that is less than 50% stenosis 2 to 4 of the ratio is 50 to 70 per 69% of stenosis more than 70% is psv is of 4 and near to total occlusion can be variable depending on operator totally occluded occluded artery will have undetectable flows now to declare an undetectable flow you really have to be an expert in that you really have to uh, reduce your um, uh, the the psvs uh, the 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 uh, pickup should be high enough for your screen uh, for your uh, machine and the uh, angle uh, of insonation should be uh, right before declaring a total occlusion which may be having some bit of streak inside so that completely changes your management actually because 99 and 100% that's 1% of uh, stenosis changes into an occlusion and the management completely changes so an ics stenosis just given an example here that if the psvs are 500 the edv is 300 and you see this kind of a spectral broadening it means that there is an 80% diameter stenosis based on the table that i just showed you so this is the plaque having an 80% diameter stenosis in this so this is just an example based on the psv and edvs so if you have a bruit in the in the carotid doppler then extensive soft tissue color uh, doppler bruit uh, can be there at the carotid bifurcation with 90% internal uh, carotid stenosis this is known as the confetti sign so if you are having this bruit sometimes the uh, clinical examination also says that always check for the bruit when you are examining the carotids to uh, if you can if you can uh, elicit that similar is on the doppler the confetti sign will mean that there is an approximately 90% carotid stenosis so immediately after the stenosis what happens in the post stenotic zone there is a spectral broadening it cannot be precisely quantified but fill in of spectral window is more than 50% uh, in diameter reduction and severely disturbed flow will have will be seen in a more than 70% diameter reduction Uh, of the uh, 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 carotids so high amplitude low frequency doppler signal flow reversal and poor definition of spectral border will be seen in severely disturbed flow and maybe the only sign of carotid stenosis in a calcified plaque wherein you cannot interrogate it properly because of calcification so spectral broadening which i just talked about immediately after this stenosis there is high amplitude low frequency doppler signal and the definition of spectral borders is very poor there may be flow reversal which denotes a, a severe spectral broadening more than 70% diameter reduction so if you talk about pseudo spectral broadening that was a true spectral broadening if you talk about pseudo spectral broadening then it is the high gain settings if they are there then there can be a pseudo spectral broadening if there is vessel wall motion if there are tortuous vessels if it is a site of branching of the vessel if there is abrupt change in the vessel diameter then that can occur if there is increased velocities like an athlete in high cardiac output uh, the the pseudo spectral broadening can occur and in aneurysms of the artery dissection and fmds that is the fibromuscular dysplasia also you can have a pseudo spectral broadening which is not true broadening so these are physiological uh, uh, states in which the pseudo spectral broadening can be there 
in the post synoptic zone distal to the site of anastomosis you can have a parvus stardust form which was there in the femurals also we talked about parvus stardust stardust parvus what is that we discussed so i'll just uh, what i i am not discussing whatever we have already discussed but uh, uh, in relation to this the features of severe stenosis are that there is a significant visible plaque more than 70% reduction psv is more than 230 edv is more than 100 the psv ratio is more than 4 spectral broadening is there color aliasing despite high velocity scale you have increased the scale but still aliasing is occurring a bruy artifact in surrounding uh, tissue of stenosis which means that there is 90% stenosis and a high pitch sound at the pulse doppler where there is stenosis you will have a jet kind of a sound uh, occurring if you put the pulse doppler at that particular steno segment so tight stenosis or occlusion as i said it completely changes your uh, decision of uh, management so it is sometimes difficult to distinguish so completely occluded icf will not release emboli is not surgery is not required while very severe stenosis potential source for emboli or acute thrombosis and may require urgent surgery so that is why these The, the 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 it is very valuable and important to decide between these two so this is actually subtotal occlusion this is not a complete occlusion this is the string sign or the trickle flow that you are seeing here so this is amenable for surgery while if you don't see this there is no surgery required so this narrow channel of low velocity in subtotal uh, carotid occlusions low prf and low filter required to detect low velocity flow so you have to decrease your prf to not have disturbances and at the same time detect this flow so prf reduction can pick up this string sign or trickle flow sign in the carotid so if it is completely occluded vis-a-vis -vis the string sign then you may get a retrograde flow in stump of ica and there is absence of flow in the ica beyond this so this is happening as uh, last time sir pointed out that the third that occurs when you are having that occlusion so that can cause this kind of a retrograde flow and this is the doppler spectrum from cca where there is externalization of the cca and uh, this is what you will see as a cap on the ica if there is an occlusion further on so occlusion of ica will cause a to and fro flow or a third flow that we can say on a pulse pulse doppler you can have a dampened systolic flow and it can it is reverse flow in early diastole so this is a complete occlusion this may this is an indirect finding that you are seeing some occlusion and you are seeing reversal of flow that means that there is no string uh, there is no it's not a stenosis and it is in complete occlusion so complete occlusion will have reversal of flow from the eca may have not always but it may have a reversal of flow from the eca and it may be supplying the ic and brain so that means when the common carotid is not having flows but the internal is having forward flows and external is having backward flows that means that the common is occluded and internal is driving its supply from the external so that is the reverse flow from eca to supply ic and brain so this is eca to ica collateralization so this also is a scenario that you can see so this is an ectatic common carotid it is it uh, as it arises from the innominate and responsible for pulsatile right supraclavicular mass so it is an ectasia of the carotid so this was about the carotids uh, i i am not going into the uh, um, i mean dissections because that is we'll have to talk about the aorta and come from the uh ostia because of paucity of time i'll move on to the uh, uh dr mogbul should we discuss carotids here or afterwards in the end mogbul sir should be should be the after the renal artery then okay okay so uh, as we come to the abdomen uh, uh, it has uh, of uh, the many arteries of interest to us it can be the abdominal aorta the upper and the lower part the celiac axis the splenic artery hepatic artery sma ima renals so we are more interested in the renals because that's uh, i mean everything is our domain to say but still we'll just focus uh, in whatever time we can about the renals so this is the anatomy of aorta and the renal vessels we can even see the accessory renals the adrenal the gonadals everything can be seen by little patients 
and many anatomical abnormalities like nut trackers and and uh, uh, aortic uh, veins we can see uh, uh, by a very patient examination if we do that so uh, uh, the venous uh, the veins are always So this is the anatomy of the uh, arteries and the veins in the abdomen. So there can be a number of uh, main renal arteries. That is the angiographic evaluation of uh, many patients had that majority majority have uh, uh, one vessel uh, in 83% right side and 86% left side, two vessels in 15% and 12% uh, respectively, three vessels and four vessels, four renal arteries are not so common, not on the right side. This study showed that on the left side, it was found in 0.2% of patients. So this is at the hilum, before the hilum, when there is a branch structure of the renal arteries, and then by high-powered high Doppler, you can even see the flows in the segmental arteries, the <coughs> interlobar arteries, and arcuate arteries and interlobular arteries are difficult to insinuate, but you can see the flows uh, happening in uh, in the in in a, because it's a very very high flow so you can also see these but of interest to us is still the hilum and the segmental arteries which will give us the the uh, clue about the uh, velocities and even after transplants it is very important to see <coughs> which segment is getting supplied and some segments if they are not getting supplied so you should know about the flows of the renal arteries so <clears throat> the main renal arteries, the transverse scan with probe angulation, this is how it should be done. And this is where you have to place your probe. This is the, 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 the plus that you see here is, is actually the location of the renal arteries where you have to place your probe, uh, probe to look for the renals. And how do they appear is that the right renal and left renal, you should know the difference in anatomy because the aorta is falling to the left and IVC is falling to the right. So the aorta, and this is the right main renal artery going like this. You see this? <coughs> this is the IVC. This is the main renal artery going like this. And this is the transverse color Doppler image of the right renal artery. So in a pre-cable right renal artery, it, it, it looks like this. This is going uh, in the, in the pre-cable region. This is the IVC that you see. So the, the, the variations can be there. So you have to know uh, uh, how uh, the, the artery is traversing and you have to note it down. So proximal main left renal artery, this is the left renal and uh, this is the aorta, this is the left renal artery that you are seeing. This is, this is normal. So early systolic notch is there, uh, like you saw dichrotic notch in the carotids. In this, there is an early systo uh, systolic notch, uh, this one that you see here. This is the Doppler of the right main. So this is a characteristic of the renal arteries that uh, normal waveforms have early systolic notch and measuring to a point of PSV results in prolonged acceleration time. Excellent negative predictive value of stenosis more than 60% is there if you have this early systolic notch. So limits in visualization of main renal arteries. When can you say that, okay, I had certain problems in seeing the renals is that when the patient is obese, when there is overlying bowel gas, when there is dyspnea, when there is shadowing from arterial calcification, when there are arrhythmias, if there is a poor angle of your insonation, if there is accessory renal artery which is small in size, then you may not be able to see. So expert sonographers detect 80 to 90% of main renal arteries and uh, uh, enhanced ultrasound improves success rate to 95% in, uh, in a good uh, Doppler uh, technologist hands. The adjustment of Doppler control, if you have to do a low flow setting for intrarenal arteries, then it is low pulse repetition frequency without aliasing. You should have a small curl box with focus on the area of interest. Greatest gain without background noise should be there because it's a very high flow. You should have the lowest wall filter and high color priority should be there for that region. So, in this, as we talked last time, is the RI is a very, very important uh, index 
for the renal arteries we use it for other arteries as well but in in the renals it is very important there is the resistive index the uh, the the uh, 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 this from this graph you can have that this is the peak that is achieved and this minus the end diastolic divided by the uh, by the peak uh, systolic is the ri normal is 50 to 70 and if it is more than 80% then that means that the resistive index is abnormal more than 80 so measurement of acceleration time this is other uh, parameters that you should see see this is the length of time in second from onset of systole to the peak systole normal value is 70 milliseconds normal renal aortic ratio that is rar is left renal artery and upper abdominal aorta see both of them and see the psvs so psv of renal artery to aorta normally is 0.67 normal value should be less than 3 anything uh, this ratio if it is uh, i mean aorta will always have a uh, i mean that's that's pretty obvious that it will have a greater psv so normal value should be always less than 3 in a rar so spectral doppler of renal arteries psv of renal artery at origin will be less than 180 rar as we talked about should be less than 3 ri should be less than 0.7 ri right to left the the difference should be less than 0.15 the acceleration time should be less than 70 milliseconds and acceleration index should be more than 3.5 meters per second uh, um, this is uh, the normal values that you have to know so doppler of renal artery stenosis always a gray scale imaging has to be seen for that a person should see the kidneys the maximum renal length the echogenicity the thickness of renal cortex masses uh, any hydronephrosis or calculus aorta should be looked for for any plaque thrombus because that is that may be the pathology there and any thrombus in the aorta any dissection continuing from the uh, aorta into the ostia of the renal arteries or any aneurysms because this is the this is the most common region of uh, the aneurysms to be found in the uh, intra aortic uh, intra renal segment or the pararenal segment and also look for the adrenal glands on the gray scale imaging so if we come down to the doppler after that uh, 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 for the uh, this thing for the uh, renals i've already explained i'll just talk a little bit about the sma and then a little bit about the aorta to uh, to just uh, 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 be in the kitty. So the longitudinal ultrasound of SMA is something like this, and a transverse ultrasound will look like this. So this is the aorta. This is the celiac trunk. This is the SMA that uh, you can see. So longitudinal ultrasound of SMA will be seen something like this. And color Doppler of SMA, <clears throat> you can you can insinuate. This is the aorta. This you can see, and uh, thrombus is demonstrated with an expandable SMA. you can see here and uh, this is where you will put your probe to look for the sma so this is the umbilicus level this is the groin and this is where you will place place in the uh, lower to the zephyr sternum so the normal values for mesenteric arteries are that celiac arteries the range of normal blood flow is 98 to 105 sma the blood flow is 97 to 142 ima is 93 to 189 and the proximal 2 to 3 cm of the vessel is the most common site for the disease because that is the ostial disease is the most common and peak velocity more than 2.8 millisecond uh, meters per second in the celiac trunk or proximal sma correlates well with the stenosis of more than 75% diameter reduction now coming to the uh, uh, aorta a little bit about just one or two slides about the aneurysms also that transverse plane overestimates the diameter so it should be measured like this so this is the correct plane to measure the diameter you should not have an oval you should have a circle to see so this is incorrect measurement this will not give you the proper uh, uh, estimation of the diameter you should have a circle if you can for a correct measurements of the diameter and correct diameter is measured by rotating the transducer clockwise until the round image of aorta comes into view so this is how you should be measuring the diameter of the aorta so if there is a swirling flow this is a characteristic of an aneurysmal flow so this is a pseudo yin yang sign uh, a proper yin yang sign is found in the uh, pseudo aneurysms while in the true aneurysms you have a pseudo yin yang sign 
similarity in appearance to pseudo aneurysm finding in which you have the true yin yang so this is the yin this is the yang so this is the uh, aneurysmal uh, blood flow finding so intra abdominal uh, intra renal abdominal aortic aneurysm distance between renal vein and the upper limit of aneurysm should be known that you should uh, you should calculate so this is how the aneurysm looks like on a on a, a, a b mod examination so this is a transverse image of the uh, fusiform uh, aneurysm and this is the sagittal image of the aneurysm that you see so ap diameter is measured from outer wall to outer wall and diameter measured in trans uh, transverse image is larger due to the obliquity that i just showed so this is the our glass aneurysm so just just to complete the findings that that you can have so there are two discontinuous focal segments of aneurysmal dilatation aortic diameter in between this is normal so this is an our glass uh, 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 dilatation this is a sacular aneurysm in which you see that there is a longitudinal image of the abdominal aorta this is the aorta and this is a sacular or mycotic aneurysm and thrombus is seen at low level echoes within the aneurysm so thank you so much mokbul sir uh, i have finished if you want me to go back to any slide i can go back to the specific slide otherwise we'll have a, a detailed discussion and uh, uh, based on that we'll be talking about specific regions if at all thank you tapish sir sir um, i think uh, dr j m mamudu sir uh, should take over uh, from this uh, part and there will be a question and answer session so that uh, our participants can ask questions and get the relevant answers and you can put your questions in uh, zoom chat boxes so that we can put your questions here and dr j m mogu sir can you hear us please yes thank you okay. uh, dr tapish shaho uh, actually uh, this is the fifth lecture the first lecture started with the duplex study of lower limb vein vein lower limb artery upper limb artery uh, the uh, neck artery Uh, and the dialysis access total five lectures and the tremendous job dr tapisho has done now the uh, uh, time is uh, for question uh, and answer session uh, we have uh, got professor mahbub roman sir uh, has joined mahbub sir can you hear us okay uh, now the uh, time for question and uh, answer session any question from the audience is there a long discussion about the uh, neck artery as well as uh, the abdominal artery particularly the renal artery dr tapish i have got a question the first lecture it was discussed that uh, the triphasic wave pattern biphasic wave pattern and monophasic wave pattern triphasic wave pattern is clean cut and it is found in the lower limb artery upper limb artery monophasic wave pattern it is typical example distal to the occlusion but what is the characteristic of this uh, carotid artery is it what type of wave pattern is it so i showed the uh, dichrotic notch and the wave pattern this so the uh, carotids will have a normal feature of uh, if you see this i'll just so this is the normal feature of a uh, a uh, carotid artery in which you do not have the characteristic triphasicity as you see in other arteries but this has this cca proximal will have this dichrotic notch you will see this sharp rise then there will be a notch like this then you will have this so the, the, the diastolic flow that you were seeing in the femorals which was going down and then coming up is is not regularly seen here so this is the notch normally and then this this is the uh, third part of the triphasic form that you see here so this is not actually going down and up like in the femoral artery so this is the normal wave form of the carotid arteries so so both the waves are above the baseline yes you can Last have one. you okay. can have a little going down like this but not that characteristic uh, uh, qrs kind of a wave that you see in a in a lower limb arteries but can we call it biphasic uh, no. that terminology should not be used here sir because this is a yeah. separate region altogether so i would not like to call it biphasic but um, you i mean if you are mentioning a dichrotic notch you are mentioning a normal flow 
Uh, I okay. think uh, the, the term of phasic uh, shouldn't be applied to the carotid and even, even the mesentery because there, there are different dynamics of the blood flow. Uh, uh, there's yeah. not much uh, peripheral resistance as you saw on the peripheral artery. So forget about the uh, triphasic, di biphasic Doppler signals in the carotid or renal artery or mesentic artery. That, that term doesn't apply. As Dr. P says, uh, this picture, what is what is showing now, if you see these pictures in the initial screening, that carotid is normal. Uh, and you can assume you're not gonna find anything normal. And obviously uh, in the normal population of elderly population over 50, you expect some kind of disease. These forms are not going to be seen uh, unless you scan a young patient. Uh, uh, so to expect this kind of uh, waveform in, in a carotid arteries, you have to look for a, a scan in younger patients. Otherwise you're not gonna see that often. Okay, but this is this is the uh, picture of common carotid artery. What will be the difference with the uh, internal carotid artery and external carotid artery? There is a tremendous, uh, the external carotid artery has a resistance. Uh, so the waveform is different. The uh, the internal carotid artery has a fairly diastolic flow. External carotid doesn't. Uh, so this this is a common carotid artery picture because the combination of internal external carotid flow. So you see the common carotid artery. Do you have a picture of uh, external carotid flow, Doctor uh, Shahu? I'll just here go. Uh. I I like to I like to share an experience with Dr. Shahu. Uh, Dr. Shahu, can you explain the resist resist uh, RI in uh, internal carotid artery lesion? As you mentioned, it's seventy in uh, renal artery. Yes. Can you correlate RI in internal carotid artery lesion? Uh, well, no. As as. Uh, Okay. So uh, this is uh, okay about the RI. So RI is mostly used, as I said, in the renal artery for the carotids, as Sir rightly pointed out. So different indices are used for different regions and different. Uh, you know, one is not equal to another. Like you cannot say that. We'll talk about the physicity in this region. So the characteristics of this region we have, we have just discussed here. So if we talk about the waveforms, then you see from the baseline, if there is a ICS mm -hmm. stenosis, uh, uh, if you can, can you see the screen, sir? No, I don't. No, 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 we cannot see now. Just one. We cannot see the screen now. Just one. Okay, so if you see this, yeah. then the stenosis, the PSVs are high, going high. Yeah. You see this 500 PSVs. EBVs that the, you see here is 300. So this is with a spectral broadening. So this is a stenosed segment uh, graph that you are seeing here. In a, in a normal mm -hmm. segment, the uh, PSVs, EDVs will be normal and the broadening will not be as much. So this is the ICA that you see. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a normal... Uh, graph uh, of the carotids. I just have the abnormals with me. So, uh, but it will be, as, as Sir said, it depends on the peripheral resistance, like external will have and internal will not have. So the, the graphical changes will be different, uh, but you have to look for the velocities and look for the ratios in the, in the segment that you, that, that is, uh, of interest to you, like in the internal carotid, wherever there is a stenosis, you just look for the normal segment, look for the abnormal segment, look for the common carotids, see the ratios, see the diameter reduction, see the uh, uh, yeah. uh, surface area reduction. Another, an, another point, another point, when you will advise for a DSA or angiogram doing duplex study on carotid lesion. Okay. So if you find 
see you have to always correlate it clinically i mean we cannot be talking only uh, about the dsa on the doppler but some scenarios that we'll just talk about if the patient is having some tias for which he has come to the uh, to to the clinician and you find a, a, a 50% stenosis based on your doppler whom you believe i mean yourself you believe that you are absolutely right then uh, you may need to check for the intracranial cords yeah to, to look for the source for the ti second is when you are having i mean extreme like i said a string sign everything yeah. will change if you're finding 100% occlusion and you do a dsa although it, it will have a 1% chance of intra procedural stroke but it may change yeah, your occlusion yeah. uh, completely because th that is the gold standard and you cannot really depend on the uh, this thing only so these are two uh, you know extreme uh, opposite scenarios in which dsa is always ad advisable while if you are finding uh, in between this in between 50 and 99% also it is advisable to go for a, a angiogram to have a complete look at the uh, 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 neck vessels look at the circle of willis and if you especially if you are planning a, a intervention yeah. then also the uh, angiogram is required whatever kind of angiogram you want you can do and diagnose uh, correctly estimate because because we have seen patients in which doctor is saying something else and angiogram completely changes the picture so in all carotid diseases this is just a leading thing this is just a just an uh, advice while the diagnostic thing will always be an angiogram to the person okay Uh, another question in uh, celiac artery occlusion most of the cases are from young ladies young uh, female patients what is your observation and experience in india regarding the uh, mechanical occlusion of uh, celiac artery or uh, atherosclerotic occlusion in athros uh, uh, osteal stenosis in uh, celiac artery sir in specifically in females if we talk about there are other other causes like fmds and other other things that can cause this kind of a of a, a osteostenosis in celiac atherosclerosis can uh, will have a predisposing risk factor mostly mostly uh, like diabetics smokers so they can be in any any uh, uh, sex where they don't might not have sex predilection while i agree with you if i mean females have more uh you know systemic diseases so they may be involving the celiac axis more but uh, for atherosclerosis there is i we don't uh, i cannot comment on any such predilection sir okay uh, okay uh, thank you for your nice presentation and deliberate presentation uh, sir uh, i'll make a comment about the female patients uh, i i know there's a uh, quite a bit of uh, more prevalence uh, of fibromuscular dysplasia in bangladesh than than i have seen here Uh, so you have to remember that the celiac and mesentic uh, also are more involved than other. Uh, first is renal, obviously, then other mesentic artery. The other symptoms you have to uh, think about: young female and skinny is a median arcuate syndrome. Uh, that you can yeah. uh, you can uh, diagnose with the ultrasound scan with a deep expiration. So when you feel almost uh, the flow through the celiac artery is uh, occluded. uh even in the longitudinal uh, um, uh, flow uh, you can see some dent on the celiac artery uh, just distal to the ostium uh, so those are the two things you need to remember in the female thank you sir you welcome can, can can you show the slide who is uh, just the internal carotid artery stenosis uh, please uh, show the slide again sure sir just a moment I'll I'll be sharing this thing. One moment. Uh, okay, okay. The peak systolic velocity, end diastolic velocity, spectral broadening. This you, you have shown this eight eighty percent, eighty eighty percent diameter reduction. Oh, this this is the picture. So. Uh, the percentage of stenosis is it velocity dependent or is it the plaque diameter dependent or both and which one is the best method to measure the stenosis 
so sir best method is what you follow there is no best method as such because it is institutional specific method like we have uh, the uh, velocity ratios are the most prevalent terminologies used as of date and the uh, doppler based if we if we talk about then the ics stenosis as i mean by that velocity if we mean that more than 230 of psv more than 100 of an edv and a ratio of more than 4 because absolute is ratio rest are uh, not absolute because they may vary as i talked about the physiological states so if the psvs and edvs are falling in that 500 and 300 then it will be more than 70% ics stenosis and psv ratios will be more than 4 so this is the uh, consensus criteria that is followed while some have also developed their institution specific criteria that they follow because one should understand by that report what they are meaning and it should be like like in us i believe uh, we were uh, talking to barry cadzen once uh, in miami and he said that the technologists some in some institutes are having i mean now it's more or less standardized because it also depends on the machine that you are using yeah, on the yeah. operator that yeah. you're using yeah, yeah. it depends on the probe that you are using so institution will have a calibrated machine of their own so that is what he meant at that time that it's a, it's a institutional specific formula and uh, spe specific things that should be followed actually for the correct estimation so is there any role of plaque uh, measurement and reduction uh, uh, diameter reduction in the uh, 2d image is there any role of measuring the stenosis there is a role uh, there is a role but you know hemodynamic measurements is a critical one and you are uh, obviously you're uh, treating the patients clinically how they are uh, what's their condition say hemodynamic status is a critical one i agree with uh, dr shahu that in institutional standardization standardization is very critical uh, and these numbers the velocity number ratio number and all these things every place has to set up their own uh and uh, not empirically but with your own experience probably correlating with the angiograms correlating with the dsa and say this is our institutional standard uh, uh so that's very critical the other thing is a standard of insinuations the degree of angle of insinuation is very critical it has to be always i'm sure uh dr shah has discussed this in the, uh, other other discuss other topics very critical on insinuation insinuating for me insinuating the artery less than 60 degree uh, so that is also needs to be standardized in each institution you can say I, i'll go always at 40 degree or i'll go at 50 degree but has to be 60 degree less uh, angle angulation of the insinuation so those are with as you guys are start uh, learning to learning to uh, 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 utilize the ultrasound diagnostic tool we have to uh, develop our own standard uh, according to your own institution according to the own machine what you utilize so those are things yeah. uh, is of critical importance so here we can see this correlates with the lower limb artery stenosis also same figure was shown uh, uh, during discussion with the uh, duplex of lower limb artery isn't yes sir so the psv ratio is always uh, i mean uh, less than 2 2 to 4 more than 4 that remains standard for uh, the stenosis for the carotids and the lower limb also and what was shown in the lecture the uh, there are some diabetic picture and you told the nasset study nasset study the uh, reduction the uh, sten yes uh, the nasset study correct Uh, so th this was uh, the uh, <coughs> measurement was radiological measurement is it in the nasset study this is on angiogram i have mentioned sir on angiogram right this is on angiogram so so the angiogram stenosis corresponds with the duplex if we measure with the uh, peak systolic velocity ratio is it yes so that is what that is what sir was saying that you have to develop your own system based on the angiogram based on the dopplers based on your standard of machine based on your protocol that you follow okay. and uh, this is a stenosis on angiogram that was seen 
I think uh, for Bangladesh, if, if you can come up with this, this is all we all utilize these numbers. Of course, it's certain uh, certain experience of in each institution or each individual you're doing the test and then come to a conclusion. These are the numbers we're going to use uh, uh, in consensus form. And then it will be standardized throughout, uh, throughout the country. Otherwise, you will have a confusion. I have seen your ultrasound scan with the uh, carotid and say, okay, where is this, uh, where is my systolic velocity? What's the ratio? You just show me a picture and the, it says velocity of 300. And so where's the end diastolic velocity? Uh, where is the ratio? That's the incomplete information so you're getting. You really need to get all this detailed depth, not only the one side of the carotid, you also need to see the other side uh, and see, as compare it and see where it is. Uh, and uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Shahu didn't go in the detail of the vertebral and subclavian. Those also come into play for carotid disease. Uh, so you really need to uh, develop your own standards, uh, but make sure you encompass all these arteries, particularly for the carotids. In any, any question? Oh, sir, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, obviously. alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Dr. Sahu, welcome again. And Abit Sahu, Good evening, Pashu. Sir, actually, I, I, was, I was listening all the while, but interestingly, I am having another meeting going on simultaneously, and those are my American friends, actually. So I could not really concentrate uh, into the whole of the talk. So it was so interesting. Yeah, but, but I, I, I like your lectures, you know, because you are so deep into it. I mean, uh, we use your techniques and talks, the knowledge that you provide uh, becomes really useful in our day-to-day -day practice, Dr. Sahu. The question actually I had in mind is about renal duplex. I mean, especially when we talk about registive index, uh, uh, very often we come, come up with uh, RI exceeding 70%. It's not very unusual. So what does that really indicate? Parent camel disease, you said that more than 80% is abnormal. I mean, what does that indicate? Is that parenchymal disease or something else? That is a peripheral resistance, actually. It, it, it talk of, talks about how the blood is flowing and what it is encountering further on. So resistive index is, is, is if, it, if you see here, I'll just uh, tell you the formula that we talked about previously also. We discussed about various RIs in various regions for yes. the uh, if you remember last time, uh, should I go into the detail of RI, sir, if you want? I All right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Just give me one second. You can, in the meantime, discuss something else, sir. I'll just, just opening that. Okay, sure, sure, sure. If sure. you comment on the RI, this really means there is a study uh, which RI followed people who has, uh, in fact, 80% uh, uh, or yeah. more followed them they end up having, uh, at least 50% of people end up having renal failure. And this also comes important in the sense you're going to have interventions of the renal artery stenosis. Are they going to respond? Respond to the interventions uh, for control on the hypertension. People who has a high risk uh, RI, as well as at the same time, you have a significant hemodynamic stenosis of the renal artery. Not necessarily they all respond to the interventions for control on the hypertension. So you really need to look at the uh, RI of the uh, uh, RI uh, before you do the intervention. You can also, uh, this is an indirect way of saying patient has a parenchymal disease in concomitant with the, with the uh, renal artery stenosis. That's the clinical decisions you guys have to make. So this is another thing, final. Dr. Sahu, Yes, a bilateral yes, renal yes, artery stenosis is a different story. Then you need to be aggressive because of avoiding uh, ischemic neuropathy, um, nephropathy. So, sir, this is uh, Bashar, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, we can see. So this is the indices that we talked about in the arterial flows that there is a pulsatility index, there is this damping factor. So, if you talk about RI, basically it is PSV minus EDV by PSV. So normal is less than 0.7 and more than 0.85 indicates increased vascular resistance and decreased end organ perfusion. 
So that means that the blood is not able to perfuse the whole kidney if the RI is increasing. So it assesses the renal and cerebral circulation for abnormal peripheral resistance actually. So the peripheral resistance is denoted by the RI. Then there is the acceleration time. It is influenced by cardiac conditions. Then if you talk about various regions, then the regions... The carotid Doppler, PSVs, EDVs, RI, acceleration time, transcranial Dopplers, is RI and PI. Peripheral Dopplers, not so much about RIs. Dra uh, draft, uh, graft surveillance, Doppler graft surveillance is all of them. Renal Doppler is mostly PSV, EDVs, RI, and uh, pulsatory index, and uh, mesenteric is all of them. So this is actually where all of them apply. So uh, RI is basically the uh, perfusion of the organ and the uh, 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 bed resistance that it de uh, denotes. Sir. And as uh, Sir was saying regarding the treatment also, you can have a little uh, indication based on the RI and the treatment. One, one last thing, Dr. Sahu, can, can this high resistive index uh, also change the uh, normal Doppler weight pattern at the hilum or uh, intrarenal pattern? I mean, uh, in spite of having the typical uh, biphagic and high endoscopic pattern that we have normally in the renal arteries, yeah, when the uh, RI becomes very high, can this also change the pattern of the uh, renal doctor? It can change, sir, because, because uh, the PSVs and EDVs are actually derivatives of the wave patterns only. So the wave patterns will change. And uh, we talked about the spectral broadening. We talked about the, 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 the we showed the uh, graphs of uh, stenosis. So PSVs and EDVs, if they go up, then the graph uh, uh, will change. The 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 uh, yeah. uh, pattern will not be like this. It will be a little broadened, and the PSVs and EDVs will be high. Uh, uh, another thing in this segment, and if you have a segmental artery lesions, this will really affect the RI. I mean, then you can differentiate. Uh, between the segments of the renal, renal, renal segments. So it does influence the RI. Thank you, sir. Professor Mahvuraman, sir, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, sir, sir, you, I... Thank you, thank you. Salaam alaikum. Uh, I'm hearing so long, very good lecture, and our uh, respected Abid sir has. Uh, some contributions and uh, the actually I was uh, trying to say that the carotid, in carotid duplex the systolic and diastolic phase in case of external carotid the diastolic phase is nearer to the baseline and in internal carotid artery the diastolic phase is broadened. So this is how we can uh, distinguish between internal and external carotid artery flow. Will you agree with this? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. I, I wanted to say this one. There, there was a, uh, as far as the internal carotid artery lesions, you know, if you take single uh, parameter of peak systolic velocity of the internal carotid artery. Uh, there was an article about 10 years ago of a different institution in the United States. If you just want to uh, special, uh, uh, come to a conclusion of degree of stenosis, if you take 180 centimeter uh, velocity, that correlates about 70% time with about 70% stenosis of the carotid artery. Without the other parameters of end diastolic uh, velocity and the uh, common current internal current ratio um, uh, that uh, that correlates 180 centimeter velocity uh, correlates to about 70 percent stenosis. Yes, I, I agree with. Any 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 question? How that can be explained? I mean, only 180 centimeter per second uh, PSV, and uh, you said uh, not all other parameters are being made. So, I mean, or feel fulfilled. So, how that can be explained that leads to 70 percent stenosis? Well, the velocity of 100, 120 to 140 is considered 50 percent stenosis. 
uh, That's average. only PSV, but uh, the corresponding other EDVs and all those things are not met. I mean, is uh, our area reduction is not seen. Yeah, but uh, when you when you make it decisions about the patients, and now uh, is 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 a prevailing decision in the United States, even in asymptomatic, you, you could uh, consider intervention of some sort. Uh, about 70% stenosis of the carotid artery. So you, you want to make a decisions on the basis of the ultrasound finding uh, or to proceed to the other investigation before you do the surgery. So this is the baseline we do is okay. Uh, uh, we have 170, uh, 180 centimeter velocity. And then we look at the end diastolic velocity. What is it? Is it 40? Then I will say, no, that's not the case. Uh, it has to be a yeah. little more is it the ratio okay, is yeah, 2.5? Yeah. That's my point. That's not 70 percent stenosis. So, yes, sir. Isolated criteria of 180 centimeter uh, velocity in the ICA has correlated about 70 percent time with 70 percent stenosis. 20 percent time. Okay, okay. Okay, but then, then, then other other uh, uh, other criteria you come to make a decision on the patient. Is it a patient? I need to intervene or I need to look at the other criteria for carotid ultrasound scan. What's the end diastolic velocity? What's the uh, uh, ratio? If that doesn't fit with the 80% stenosis, I'm not going to do anything about the patient, especially when a patient is asymptomatic. So oh. those are the clinical decisions you make looking at the isolated one criteria for carotid velocity. As Got said, point, it's, that it's a clinical decision based on your Doppler finding whether you need to interrogate, interrogate it further or you need to do something about the patient or you need to just leave it as such. So that is what uh, in the US, the protocols, as, as Mohammed Rahman sir said rightly, that uh, uh, the one criteria, three criteria, angiogram, some other investigation, or put him on best medical management depending on the clinical scenario. So it's not just taken into one isolation. So we have to assess the wall, the clinical, the plot, and the hemodynamic as well. Yes, sir. Of course. Okay. Patient as a whole. I mean, yes, that's, that's my point. Yes, sir. And then you but, look at the uh, see the patients. What what does that what do they need to be? Or what do they need to do? Or what do you need to do for the patients? Doctor yes, Narachandra Mundal, can you hear us? One question to Abhit, sir. What about surgery in asymptomatic patient in carotid artery? Uh, it is a bit impossible in our setup to do any surgical procedure to asymptomatic patient. Yes, it is. I mean, if, if a patient is relatively young and active and you have 80% on your diet criteria, I have 80% stenosis in the ultrasound scan, then you go for the other information that Dr. Shahu said, you need to see the inflow of the carotid and the uh, uh, circle of willis before you go into for interventions. Yes, you can. We do, we, we, that is done routinely about if you establish a 80% stenosis, again, coming back, coming back to the morphology of the plaque, and when you say if it's heterogeneous plaque, that patient has a higher risk of having embolizations rather than homogeneous plaque and the uh, very calcified plaque. Uh, so uh, looking at the ultrasound scan morphology, that'll make a difference. Correct. Dr. Saifullah Khan Murad, uh, can you hear us? Yes, so, hello. Uh, Murad will you talk anything? Oh, that was, man, that was a very good and informative session. I really enjoyed it and learned many things about the sessions. Dr. Tapusha is doing very good. And uh, as a whole Ignesina Center, Ignesina Vascular Care Center is doing a very good job. Thank you, thank you, Safiullah, sir. Thank you, Mokbul, sir, Narishan, Mondal, sir, Bashar, sir, and specifically Mohammed Rahman, sir, for uh, sparing his time and your love, sir. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sahu, and uh, thank you, Abit, sir. Thanks to Mokbul, sir, and all others.
Thank you, sir. I think uh, uh, we can uh, share some of our thoughts uh, before closing the session. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Norris Mondal, sir, uh, to say something. Uh, it was a very special occasion today. This was fifth session uh, with uh, Dr. Tafish Rahul, sir. And uh, I think it was a uh, last session for now. So I would like to request Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Narsandar Manusar to say something about us, for us. Not last session, every every Sunday there is program one after another. In this series, yes, sir. Yes. Series, series. Uh, Professor Dr. Narsandar Manusar, would you like to say something, please? Uh, I think uh, sir is uh, busy uh, due to some reason. Uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Tapi Shahu sir to say something about this uh, session. Uh, please uh, say something. So, uh, I mean, it's it's always good to um, have audience. Actually, what does the speaker want is is people who are interested in listening. So, uh, what what uh, Dr. Mokbul Hussain was uh, sir was saying that I mean the efforts. I mean the efforts come because of the interest of everybody, and specifically if everybody wants to talk about all this and discuss at this hour, that gives the drive. And specifically, if you have, uh, you know, even uh, Rahman sir is there who's sparing his time. If, if uh, uh, I mean, Bashar sir was there, Mandal sir was there. I mean, these, these are specifically uh, attendees every time that we have. And I'm really, really impressed by the audience and by the interest shown by you all. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, uh, greetings from India. And specifically on your uh, uh, Matra Bhasha Day, I congratulate you all for this thing and uh, hope to meet you all soon, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, a uh, lot to you uh, for your great words, Dr. Tapi Shahu, sir. Uh, we learned a lot from you about uh, duplicity studies, and uh, we are really grateful for this. I think uh, both doctors and patients will be benefited. Uh, inshallah, uh, as you said, we will meet and see each other physically, inshallah, near very future. Uh, now, I would like to request Dr. M. Abidur Rahman, sir, our beloved mentor and freedom fighter, uh, to say something uh, for, yeah, about this program. Before sir. Abidur Rahman, sir, Professor Mahabur Rahman, sir, is here. We like to uh, hear something from him. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mahabur Rahman, sir. Professor Dr. Mahabur Rahman, sir, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, I have enjoyed this session. Uh, we are learning so many things, and so many things we are also sharing. And especially Abdul Rahman sir, he is like mentor. He is giving some many, many inputs in this lecture. So uh, I shall be happy it will continue and we shall know more things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Mahabur Rahman sir, for your uh, great words. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Dr. M. Abdul Rahman sir to say something about today's program. Sir. Hey everybody, uh, happy Shohid uh, Day. Uh, happy International um, Mother Language Day. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Zhao uh, uh, to encompass such a broad topics in a short period of time with the, with the gist of the uh, 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 lectures. And you did a very good job. Um, and thank you for uh, joining us here. Uh, I, I, I know uh, in Bangladesh, you, uh, we have a situation, the ultrasound really hasn't developed as much as you need to. Uh, this is the area you can really uh, um, encompass the diagnostic studies and various part of the vascular disease. And, and uh, you need to uh, probably have a, a uniform standard and protocols all around the country uh, so you can make it a standard uh, judgments. Uh, somebody coming from other other sites uh, or the other places with the ultrasound report, uh, looking at that, you can say, okay, this is what it is, uh, and uh, you can come to a reasonable uh, uh, diagnosis of that patient with the report. Uh, as, as I said before, I have seen ultrasound in the past uh, from various. Uh, sources, it didn't make any sense. So say, then we say, where is the angiograms? Uh, um, uh, angiogram is the last diagnostic tool you need to do. With the ultrasound scan, you can diagnose almost almost all vascular disease if, you're, if you are 
uh, devote your time and energy to it. Sir, I, I want to add add one thing with this. In Bangladesh, actually, everyone, everyone is doing ultrasound. And the report they are giving, it is not by only vascular surgeon, given by radiologists, given by cardiologists. So we are in a great dilemma. What to do? Recently, I found a patient, they have written 50% stenosis of internal cavity artery. Patient is young, 25 years. And I did the, again, carotid duplex and I found it absolutely normal. So we cannot, how to block these things? So that- well, this, this is, we used to be a problem 30 years ago in the United States. See, everybody was doing, uh, vascular surgeons are doing, uh, car uh, cardiologists are doing ultrasound and the radiologists are doing. So uh, uh, ultimately the, all the specialists uh, came under one umbrella, inter-society uh, vascular uh, ultrasound. Uh, so, so they uh, developed a criteria. These are the things we need to have. And if you do a carotid ultrasound scan, these are the minimums, minimum inquiries you have to do. Uh, to make an, a, a standard of carotid ultrasound. The, if we are doing arterial studies, these are the minimum things as ultrasound, it used to be PVR, but then that is standardized as well. So these are the minimum things you need to do a, a what do you call complete studies. So that, that needs to come from the specialty groups. Uh, so you, if, if you are going to say, um, uh, uh, cardiologists have done a karate studies and uh, it has a halfway information, then you guys need to, uh, both groups or three groups need to sit down and say, these are the minimum standards we need to see in a study of karate. These are the minimum standards we need to see in arterial studies. Or uh, these are the minimum standard we need to see the aorta. I know the renal mesentic artery is very uh, tedious it needs a lot of technician experience and time consuming. They take about an hour, hour and a half, even in the best hand, probably an hour minimum uh, to do those studies in the mesenting renal arteries. Those are the last things you, you can develop, but you can develop a protocol and minimum standard of the studies. This needs to be in the report, not say 50% stenosis of the carotid artery. I would not take that at all. I'll say, what's the velocity? What's the ratio? What's the other side? I need to have the information, those information to come to conclusions. Yes, 50% estenosis or 90% estenosis. Just like Dr. Shah shows in the studies, these are the criteria you need to have to come to, a come to a conclusions that this is 80% estenosis. So there are a lot of things needs to be done. It's inter-specialty group discussions. First, you guys need to organize yourselves. These are the minimum thing. Then you can approach the cardiologist. Then you can approach the radiologist. That's how you need to do. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it's now it's time to uh, close uh, today's session and to express a vote of thanks to the participants. Uh, Sarvier was the scientific partner of today's session. Now I would like to request Dr. G.M. Mogulshan, sir, vascular and endovascular surgeon from Ibnisina Hospital to express a uh, vote of thanks and close the session for today. Dr. G.M. Mugurishan, sir, please. Again, thanks all, particularly uh, Dr. Tapish Shah, he has uh, done a tremendous job uh, for us and uh, he was with us for five days and uh, he made all the lectures acceptable and it was really worthy and we are benefited from his lecture. And Dr. Tapish, uh, uh, next, in future, this, this is a continu continuous program. Uh, you are always uh, invited, and uh, we think you are with us. And uh, when we need, we'll call you again and again, and uh, hope you will participate uh, with us. And uh, uh, another thing, what Mahavu Roman sir was asking, and Avid sir, the, all the sessions, if we think get together, we should uh, make a set protocol. Uh, for the reporting of the duplex of various uh, parts of the uh, body, carotid, neck art, uh, uh, lower limb artery, upper limb artery. Now is the time to set up a protocol. Otherwise, the variation of the report will not be able to prevent the variation of the report. And sometimes 
অনেকেই শেষ একুশে এ উপলক্ষে বলি অনেকেই বলে যে আমাদের রিপোর্টিং ভ্যারিস এক জায়গা থেকে আরেক জায়গা এক পার্সন থেকে আরেক পার্সন এক সেন্টার থেকে আরেক সেন্টার দেয়ার ইজ ওয়াইড ভ্যারিয়েশন সুতরাং এই শুধু তা না স্যার যেটা বলছেন আমরা বলছি অনেকেই করছি ইনক্লুডিং সনোলজি স্টেরিওলজি ভাস্কুলার সার্জন কার্ডিওলজিস্ট বাট ইফ দেয়ার ইজ আ সেট প্রোটোকল দেন এই ভ্যারিয়েশন রিপোর্ট ইজ এটা ইট উইল বি পসিবল টু রিডিউস দা ভ্যারিয়েশন সো হোপিং দিস অ্যান্ড নেক্সট আমাদের নেক্সট রবিবার সানডে টেন পি এম another session will be uh, uh, held and uh, inviting all that session today's uh, program uh, is uh, uh, declared uh, uh, ending here thank you all again for the office thank you sir thank you thank, thank you thank you, you dr tapish sir thank you abdul abdul rahman sir